Hello and welcome to the chapter 2 of tutorial for Ansoft Maxwell. In this chapter we are going to look at different setups and solution types that Maxwell provides for different problems. As we know the first chapter was dedicated to some uh, entry level uh, tutorials on uh, how to model and verify and validate the model for Maxwell. In this chapter now we are going to get ready for our first simulations and before we do that I thought uh, it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to have these uh, brief presentations on different solution types that Maxwell provides and with that you can know basically which solution is the best for your problem and then you go with the right solution and you get the right answer with that. Okay now let's start with the first question that you might ask. The question is, if there is one physic and there is one problem or structure, why we should have different solutions for that? Well, definitely the answer is the same for all the all different solution types. The, the question is why we have these types. Well, we have these different types because answer, Ansoft will try to provide the answer for your problem with the least uh, amount of uh, computational uh, resources and give you in the fastest way. To do that it will only compute the quantities that is required for your problem. So it basically categorizes your, so your problem with the kind of uh, problems that needs electro, electric field voltage uh, sort of uh, quantities or it needs current densities or current or the magnetic fields as an answer. So if you need just the current density or the magnetic fields, we have three different solutions for that. So basically, one question is, the application will derive what kind of a solution types you are going to use. The second important thing is the excitation that you are using in your problem. If the excitation is current, you will basically go in with, uh, more or less, you will go with the magnetic uh, way of the solutions or the types of the solution. If your excitation is in voltage, you will go for the electric uh, solutions. And if you are looking for the breakdown voltage, for example, you will go with the electric. If you are looking for the uh, inductance, you will go with the magnetic, and so on and that. Also, one of the important things is the material that you are using and how well you want to define your materials. Sometimes your materials has BH curve which is a nonlinear and has a saturation level. And those materials, you need more intense solutions um, to basically find the right spot on the B and H curve operating point. And then you can save and solve your, your, the rest of the uh, uh, basically magnetic field. So for those kind of materials, you want to have a magnetostatic uh, solutions, which will take care of those nonlinearities in the materials. And one of the most important questions is, is everything a stationary? Because if it's a stationary, you don't need to go and have an intense in detail solution or like a calculation to get the results. If it's on the other hand, there are some parts that are going to move uh, regarding the magnetic fields and movement of those parts are going to change some other characteristics in your structure. You want to have a transient magnetic transient solution which will take care of all those effects at the same time. So that uh, is a very a sm brief um, details and uh, descriptions on why we have different solutions in Maxwell and the answer lies on how your application is, what your excitation is, and what the type of materials, how details you want to um, accurately basically model and if whether or not a stationary or movement, any object that is going to move in your structure. Based on these uh, factors, you will have different solutions. Okay, now the question is how you want to get these different solutions. In Maxwell, you just need to go and click on the Maxwell 3D menu, and the very first uh, selection that you have is a solution type, as you can see in this picture. When you select on that, you will see a window like this, which gives you a six different 
solutions. I'm going to go ahead and talk about these solutions more in details, but um, the overview that you have here is you can basically see we have two kinds of solutions, magnetic solutions or electric solutions. In the magnetic solutions, most of the time you have the H computed, and in the electric field you have E computed, most of the times, not always. And you have three different magnetic and three different electric fields that I will go ahead and talk about them later. So as I said, you have magnetostatic, which is basically DC. You have eddy current, which is AC magnetic, and you have transient magnetic, which we have. It's a very comprehensive solutions that can be um, sinusoidal or non-sinusoidal. Any kind of the var time varying excitation can be applied to this. Um, on the other hand, we have electrostatic or DC conduction. Those are all DC and they can be uh, at the same time. And we have electric uh, transient, which is a bit of less. That's what I found. It's a bit less comprehensive as the magnetic transient simulations. However, it will give you a lot of information about your structure. Let's go and talk about the magnetic uh, solution. The magnetic solution is good for applications like solenoid, inductors if you want to know the inductance value, if for motors if you want to um, uh, basically simulate for the actuators, for the permanent magnets and things in this nature. You can find this application similar in different um, solution types and I will tell you what's the difference between the different solution types. It will, of course, compute a DC magnetic field, and uh, one can ask this question that if it's a DC magnetic field, how you are finding the inductances, and how do you get the mutual inductance between two inductors? That would be answered when I'm going to go into details about the magnetostatic uh, simulations, and in an example that I will show you, uh, I will talk about that later then. The sources that you can apply in this kind of uh, simulation is limited to DC current in the conductors uh, also you can have DC um, current density in the con conductors uh, you have you can have permanent magnet and you can have a static magnet field represented by an external boundary conditions that you can apply and these can be the uh, uh, solutions that basically sources that you can apply uh, the static magnet field uh, can be a number that you say or can be a result of a computation of a DC conductive. So I will talk about that later actually. So uh, these are the sources that you have. So as a result, um, what we will do is uh, the, the ANSOFT will do a lot of uh, initial uh, things. Uh, basically it will uh, s uh, solve uh, your structure uh, with the finite element method which uh, in that uh, will basically break up your structure into the different nodes and then we'll extrapolate between the nodes to, to find the values uh, each uh, small sections or the nodes that are like 10 nodes together uh, in, in a tetrahedral uh, configuration um, uh, it's one tetrahedral uh, uh, basically cell for the mesh and the meshing is automatic you don't need to mesh it Although um, and it's an adaptive mesh, meaning that each time that the result is not very close to what it wanted to be, it will uh, refine the mesh and makes it even more accurate to get to the point that you need in terms of accuracy and precision. Uh, those are all topics that I will talk about later on. If you have any questions, you can uh, see in the next videos. But um, what I'm going to say here is that the magnetic study is going to, with the simulator, is going to feel, find the magnetic field H. After that, it will get the magnetic flux density uh, calculated automatically from the H, and it will also give you the current density G. So these are the values that you will get. These are the fields that you will find at the end of the simulations. You cannot have more than that. Of course, from those B and J and H, you can have forces, energies, torques, for and the inductance matrix, of course. And um, these are the results that will come after if you ask for it, depending on how you are defining your uh, problem. Okay.
The second uh, a magnetic basically solution is the eddy current, which is basically the AC version of the simulations. So in this one, you can still uh, the application, as you can see, is limited to it's not limited, but it's basically the solenoid inductors, motors, actuators, and the permanent magnets. And um, you can uh, see that it it will also um, it not only will uh, solve for the steady state, but also for time varying AC magnetic fields. Note that the time varying here doesn't mean that you can have any pulse or any weird um, time varying function. It, it should be a, a, a sinusoidal or like a periodic uh, magnetic field that you will find. Basically, a sinusoidal uh, magnetic field is uh, the one that you can actually compute. The sources, as I said, is sinusoidal uh, current or conductors. You have time varying external magnetic field that is also represented by the boundary conditions. Uh, so basically, with the boundary condition, you can have always apply some external mag magnetic around your system, like a model, like like an actuator that has some permanent magnets around it. So you can basically, um, uh, with the boundary conditions in this type of simulations, you can apply those conditions. Uh, the materials here, the per permeability and the conductivities, has to be linear. So that's an important thing um, that is differentiating eddy current from the magnetostatic because one can say that if it's going to solve a steady state and time varying, why should I bother to go with the magnetostatic? Well, in the magnetostatic simulations, it all is always in a steady state kind of a computation for the magnetic field, but the material can be defined in a nonlinear um, matter where you have a saturation limit and if you put too much current you will have a different inductance for your coil and based on that when you go with the magnetic you can actually say okay because I put this amount of current my inductance is this much my coupling is that much but when you go with the AC you don't you don't have that option you basically have a flat pH um, curve I mean a linear one and then uh, basically you cannot you cannot play with that so it's always linear and uh, because it's linear, you can say, okay, if the, for example, if the mutual coupling between L1 and L2 is this much, is M, if I apply 10 times more current source, it's the same M. It wouldn't change. In electromagnetic field, it will change because it will basically find the material's BH and says, okay, you are putting too much current, and then because of that, your mutual inductance will change. So the magnetic magnetostatic is more realistic when you are dealing with a large amount of current or large variation of the input current. Um, however, if you are looking at the high DC, high, high AC uh, simulations, then uh, in that manner you have to stick with this uh, eddy current. Again, the result in this type of the simulation is the ma this ANSOFT is going to uh, find for you the edge the magnetic field and also the magnetic scalar potential uh, omega and after that it will automatically without asking you will compute the magnetic flux density and the current density J now if you ask the ANSOFT it will give you the forces it will give you the energies and also the torques and if you like the inductance, inductance matrix so these are the things that you can have it um, I'm not sure if it's inductance matrix uh, matrix. I have to actually think about that. Um, um, I think you have the option to go with the matrix, but if it's not, it will give you the inductance anyway. Okay. Uh, now we are going to the most comprehensive type of solutions, which is a transient magnetic uh, type of the solutions. You can find that as a third options in the solution types. In, for this kind of uh, applications, like as I say, solenoid inductors, motors, actuators, transformers, permanent magnets, um, energy-driven, um, you know, uh, EM devices, uh, low frequency or high frequency, you can use this uh, transient uh, magnetic. It will compute a steady state and time varying AC magnetic field, and um, the sources can be arbitrary time varying current or current density in the conductors doesn't need to be also si just sinusoidal as you can see this is the difference between transient and the eddy current in the eddy current you have to apply only the sinusoidal but here you can have all different time varying um, current it will uh, find the magnetic fields 
based on each time step so in each time it will take a lot of time it will take way more time than the other kind of the simulations but it will be very very accurate so um, if you're familiar with the uh, with the circuit design in the circuit design we also have um, transient simulations and AC simulations of course AC simulation is always taking care of the C's and L and based on the C's and L and the parasitic capacitance and inductance in your circuit it will give you some AC response but the transient response is another story the transient start when you get a result from the transient response is the most accurate response that that simulator can give you same thing for here this transient response is pretty accurate and um, you can have the permanent resident uh, sorry permanent magnet you can have voltage and the current uh, to be applied to the windings and also these windings can be a source or a port that can be uh, a bridge between uh, Maxwell and the Maxwell circuit editor where in the Maxwell circuit editor you can apply more other sources or other circuit elements and excite the Maxwell circuit with that so if you are running this transient solution you basically um, having a free simplorer inside your Maxwell uh, it's called sim, uh, Maxwell circuit editors also the difference here is the simplorer will also show you the results and you can manipulate and do a lot of things but in the Maxwell circuit editors you don't have that fancy features but you can you can you can excite your circuit from outside as you can see the materials the permeability can be linear or nonlinear and uh, there is no limit for that as well um, this uh, simulation as I said the magnetic field and the current density J is is in a time domain so it will not only find the magnetic field H it will also find the current density J and after that we will find a magnetic flux density B and from the B and J and H it will give you the forces torques energy core loss and the flux linkage which is basically the mutual inductance that you want to find is basically uh, it's a flux link linkage that you have between two inductors one more uh, important uh, point to say once again it's not only for stationary objects the transient magnetic uh, solution you can have a part that is moving and will take care of that and will find how much force it will apply to that and how much movement you have and how everything will change why because it will tie it will basically calculate for you a each step of the time it's not like some one close um, equation formula that it gives you okay this is the result for different frequencies it will give you pair time and you can have uh, because it's pair time you can have movement pair time and you can have speed and you can every different shapes that you want so this is the greatest and the most advanced and comprehensive way of trans, uh, simulation you can have in maximum okay move on to the electrostatic electric part of that of course we had magnetostatic now we have electrostatic the magnetostatic for those inductors for the electrostatic we have it for capacitors uh, it will also give you for high voltage line if you want to tend to um, if your application is to simulate the high voltage lines and effect of that you have that there if you want to find for example the breakdown voltage of a very big cap or like um, an inductor uh, you can basically use this sort of simulation electrostatic simulation as your uh, answer it will compute it compute the static only the DC electric fields from that it will find the result the, the many other uh, quantities as you can see the sources is arbitrary time varying current in conductors uh, you can have uh, permanent magnets and the materials the permeability can be linear or nonlinear it will uh, find electric scalar potential uh, phi and after that it will find the electric field for you and after that it will also automatically calculate electric flux density D of course same story goes for force torques and capacitance matrix matrix um, 
this electrostatic simulations can be coupled with DC conduction simulation, which is another form of a DC simulation for uh, electric part. And um, the, the combination is like electric potential uh, from the DC con conduction simulation is going to be used as a voltage boundary condition. So we'll solve the DC conduction part of the problem and then it will use the result as a boundary condition to solve the rest in electrostatic. So this is how it works. We have now transient electric which gives you, it's good for applications like capacitors and power supplies and uh, it will compute the steady state and time varying AC electric fields and currents in conductors. Not only the electric field but also the clients as well. Uh, the sources can be applied potentials, you can have charge distributions or voltage differences or you can have applied um, surface current or the current on the surface of any plate. You can actually apply that and based on these sources that you have in your problem you can basically find which solution is the best for you. The materials here you can have conductivities and permittivity, permittivities uh, epsilon. You can define those things in the materials when you're in this type of simulations and they should be linear only. You cannot have a non-linear permittivity. Um, as I said, the magnetic field, um, actually this is, uh, this is actually not true. The magnetic, uh, in, in this simulation, the electric field will be, um, uh, the electric field and current density will be, uh, uh, fine, and from that you will have the electric, uh, the electric uh, field um, E and electric de field density uh, D will be calculated. And from those two, so these two are wrong, and the magnetic flux, this is for the old one, I just copy paste and I forgot to change it. And from that you can get all the informations like uh, forces, torques, and uh, I think the core the core loss, but I don't think you can get the flux in in, in cage linkage because uh, it's not going to find the uh, the H and G. It's it's all in E and V domain. Um, make sure that to understand that this one is not for the moving part, and everything should be stationary. All the objects are in stationary in this simulation. Okay, so that will be. I hope it's a brief. Uh, so yeah, basically uh, explanations on what is the difference between the type of solutions and you can see from the excitations that you are going to apply or the application which kind of the, the, of the solution is the best for you and you go with that and thank you very much for watching this next is going to be uh, more details on each solutions and I'm gonna give you an examples and I will walk you through the examples and give you more information um, on each solution time. Thank you very much.